Morning everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel We Fade to Grey and today I'm at Victoria Station because I'm heading over to York to meet uh, my good mate Nick Mayer to uh, record some content and uh, hopefully have a few beers together so uh, come and join me. So finally made it, I'm here in York with my good mate Nick Mayer. So um, it's a beautiful sunny day, we're just going to take uh, a walk through York and uh, I'm going to interview Nick at different locations throughout the city and just try and understand uh, his reasons for retiring and uh, what advice he would give anyone think in a similar position thinking of retiring soon. Looking forward to it. So Nick's YouTube channel uh, focuses mainly on retirement, uh, his decision to retire and uh, whether it's the right decision for you to retire. So what I'd more or less ask is, I think, I think Nick, you, you retired at, uh, at 45, was it? 44. 44, even younger. Yep. Can, um, I mean, how, how can you retire at such a young age? Well, to be honest with you, um, it's very difficult to retire at 44 and I don't think many people can. I was in a fortunate position that I'd run a business, built a small business, and it was a saleable asset. And because that business was sold and I was able to cash in my shareholding, I was able to retire at 44. But for a lot of people, I think it's, uh, it's a dream, and it's probably fairly unrealistic. I think maybe 54 mm. might be a more realistic number. I mean, I'm, I'm 56 now, and even though I've been out of work for several months, I, I would... I would hesitate to call myself retired or even semi-retired because I know that you know I, I do want to keep working whatever that that looks like I'm not just ready for the traditional idea of what retirement is so I think you know when you say to people when people say they're retired or, or they're looking forward to retirement I think very often we have an idea what that what, what that looks like it's you know it's it's getting out of bed you know when you want playing golf going on on holidays it's, it's, it's that your idea of retirement or, or is it or is it a more specific definition no that's definitely not my view and that is the view of a lot of people they kind of imagine endless days playing golf going on holiday no more work no more stress and all that kind of thing and and that is retirement for a lot of people i mean i've got a, a 93 year old sorry 94 year old uncle who retired when he was 63 and he hasn't done a day's work since so that was his definition of retirement but it wasn't my definition and the reason for that was I had a bit of a role model in my dad who um, he was in the police for the best part of 30 years and he retired when he was 56 and he was retired, he was retired from being a police officer um, but he continued to work a couple of days a week he worked for a local firm of solicitors as a police advisor the rest of the time he played golf, he tended his allotment, he went on long holidays with my mum but he still worked two days a week but if you were to meet him in the pub and say, hey Tim, how are you getting on? Are you still in the police? He'd say, oh no, I'm retired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, uh, I think my, my father had a similar experience. He, he worked full time until he was 56, literally my age. And then um, he was made redundant from the council. That did actually happen, believe it or not. He was actually made redundant from, from the local council. Um, but then he took up a part time job uh, with um, the, un the union that he'd been a member of, he'd been a member of uh, Unison for years and uh, it was just off a little part-time job uh, doing that, I think it was just literally shuffling papers, Yeah. Um, you know, a few mornings a week, but it, it kind of gave him a reason to get out of bed. Um, but I think, like, I think like your father, my father definitely retired from something and, and then it was a case of, you know, filling your time, doing something that you either enjoy or that's going to provide, you know, a certain level of income. I think. I think in your case, um, it was it was a decision that you wanted to, to specifically finish one part of your um, your career, either to move on to something else or just just have a break and, and maybe you know reassess where your life was at that point and, and think of something something else you know to refocus on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 
that's a good point you made there about retiring from something. Yeah, yeah. So I felt like I, I'd retired from being a business owner. Mm -hmm. I'd owned a, a business, albeit a small business with 60, 70 people. It wasn't a, you know, multinational, but it was full time. It was 12, 14 hours a day. You know, in, sometimes it could be seven days a week. And by the time I got into my early 40s, to be perfectly honest with you, John, I was burned out. Mm -hmm. um, I was a good, I'm just thinking, three and a half stone heavier than I am now. Mm -hmm. um, all the things that I did as a lifestyle in that business had kind of built up over the years. You, you know the sort of thing, corporate lunches, mm -hmm. evenings, uh, events, that sort of thing. And just probably didn't look after myself as much as I, as I should have done. So I was definitely burnt out. So for me, I was retiring from owning a business. Yeah, yeah. And it's a very good point you made which was about retiring from something and then retiring and then it's a case of retiring to something. Yeah, yeah. My father who I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. he retired to being an advisor in a solicitor's firm. Yeah. The mistake I probably made was that I didn't have anything to retire to. Mm -hmm. So I actually did just go yeah. into full time retirement and didn't yeah, work. Yeah. So I, I think I think I think we're we're possibly getting a bit closer to the uh, to, to the to the crux of um, why you ultimately found retirement unsatisfying, if 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 if, 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 I'm, yep. if I'm assessing that correctly, yep. I think after you know three or four years of you know living the dream, as we might call it, you you, you began to find that uh, unsatisfying and that you need to find a purpose again. Yeah, that's a good point yeah. because what I found with retirement was that um, 44, I retired in the summer. I think it was May, if I remember rightly. Yeah. Um, lovely weather. Uh, my, my son will be finishing school fairly soon. So the first six months were, were a honeymoon, really. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we went on cruise ship holidays. We, we traveled the world. I got to spend a lot of time with him. And it was a real honeymoon. Mm. Um, then the, the British winter kicked in. Mm. Reality. Um, <laughs> yeah, reality kicked in. Yeah. Not so much until January. We went on another cruise in the, in the, at the Christmas time. Yeah. But in the January, mm -hmm. um, you know, awful weather, sun back at school, yeah. um, and I kind of started feeling a bit, well, for want of a better word, I started feeling a little bit lost. Yeah. Um, my wife had her life, which hadn't changed. She'd built a life around the school mums. Yeah. Um, so she was out and about doing lots of things. Um, yeah, and I felt, you know, I, w I went into a bit of a dark place at that point and, and was a bit lost. I think some, some comments I've heard from people who have retired, um, possibly, you know, younger than, than they might have otherwise done is they've, they've often commented how long the days can be. Because mm. uh, I think if, if you know, if your day, if you're used to having a day of, you know, going to work and then coming home, cooking your meal, looking after the kids, the business of, of raising a family, and I think um, once you're retired, if, if, that, if all that kind of evaporates, either naturally or by choice, you, you kind of realize that, you know, there's a lot of hours in the day and there's a lot of days. Mm. Ahead, you know, there's, there's possibly decades of your life ahead of you, and that, that can be very um, unsettling. Yeah, uh, realizing that, and, and kind of you kind of have a bit of a, a bit of a crisis, thinking, yeah. you know, what I need purpose again. Um, yeah. And I think I think that that's very much um, a theme of middle age, I and mean, particularly if if there's a, if there's a life change that maybe it wasn't your choice, or maybe it was your choice. Yeah. So, so you, you you leave work, you move redundant, or um, you know that that, or you, or you, your kids have left home. Mm. Um, what 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 got you out of bed? You know, every day for the last 20, 30 years while you were younger has has disappeared, and and you need to kind of like refocus. So I think I think it, it's an eternal question, really, isn't it? Of, of um, you know what what we kind of we're all living longer. Ho hopefully, we're more financially secure. It's 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 how how we find purpose even if even if we're financially secure yeah. and um, you know we don't necessarily have have financial worries that that isn't necessarily enough to carry you forward in life you do you mm -hmm. do very much need a purpose yeah. and um, particularly myself at, at 56 um, you know I, I'm kind of entering that phase of my life now where you know I do need to possibly refocus on what's yeah. important absolutely. Um, is, has that been your experience when you were my age or...? Yeah, probably a little bit sooner than 56 to be honest. I mean, the way my kind of retirement went was that uh, I had this honeymoon period, then I had a six months of, of, of gloom, which yeah. was the, partly to do with the British weather I think. Yeah. Um, and then I had this period of about three years where I was continued to be fully retired. 
where the gloom lifted because I started being very active. And what I did was I, I sought out people like me. Um, so I started looking for places where I could meet people who had perhaps retired from businesses like I had. Yeah. They might not be my age, but they, they were people who'd sold businesses uh, and, 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 and retired as I defined it. Yeah. Um, and I found those places. And so I started building a bit of a network and a group of people who were very similar to me, aged from, well, even younger than me. Some of them were as, as young as late 30s, mm -hmm. uh, up to in their 60s. And I started hanging out with, with, with them. Um, and that was, that was good. Um, you know, that, that built a bit of a social life mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. And the reason I did that as well was that none of my friends who, who were my age were retired. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, most of them were in corporate jobs. Yeah. Not many had gone into business. Mm -hmm. Many of them were like yourself. They might be, um, you know, senior finance professionals or marketing professionals, things like that. That's what they were, or they mm -hmm. might work for the bank. Yeah. And they could they couldn't just drop what they were doing and yeah. come and play golf with me. So I had to find a whole new group, and that's what I and that's what I did. But I still, at that point, um, purpose wasn't um, wasn't there. It wasn't on my agenda at that point. So these these people that, that you were connecting with that were in a, a similar situation to yourself was were they were they experienced a similar kind of um, not crisis but you know um, looking for purpose or were they just enjoying the fact that they didn't have to work anymore? Yeah, they, they definitely hadn't had a crisis of purpose at that point. Okay. Um, <laughs> they, 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 they were they were hundred percent enjoying the kind of fruits of their labour. Got you. Okay. Um, really, and, and and we were. I mean. I, I, I don't want to paint too rosy a picture, but we were, we were having some fun. You know, yeah. we played yeah. pigeon shooting, golfing, you name it. We did yeah. it. We used to meet, um, we used to meet once a month formally as a club, and talk about all sorts of things. You know, that anything from politics to business to investments, you name it. Yeah. yeah. Um, we had speakers come to came, came and what have you. We'd have a bit of lunch, and then in the afternoon we'd go and do an activity of some kind, and then in between the meetings, some of us became good friends, and I started hanging out with them as as, as, as friends. So. For for a few years, it was it was definitely a, a retired person's life in the sense of 100% retired. Because some of these guys were older as well. Do you think that possibly below the surface of uh, the clay pigeon shooting and the golfing and all the rest of it, there was there was some self doubt in some of the people that you were with, or, or, or was that just not not a thing at all as far as you? you no, were some of them some of them definitely some yeah. of the, some of them were 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 definitely thinking. You know, should they, should they go back into business? Mm -hmm. um, ha, ha, how could they use their knowledge, their crystallised knowledge, all this kind of thing? Uh, I wasn't one of them at that time, but I did I did pick up on it, and I did, you know, it did resonate with me, and I thought, well, there's a chance. And some of them had been retired yeah. longer than me, mm -hmm. um, so I figured that there was going to come a point where I might start feeling the same as some of them. So were they, were they bored? Did they just feel that? you know they were, they were wasting their, their talents or what, what what was kind of making them feel like that I think they got over the boredom I think that comes can come at the beginning yeah. um, they they were they they felt that they had uh, a lot more to give they had they had they yeah. they'd built up a lot of knowledge yeah. and yeah. they wanted to have some way of of using that knowledge mm -hmm. in yeah. uh, however that might be yeah. some of them maybe to help people others just you know fancied um, building more businesses or getting involved in building more businesses, um, but they wanted to use what they'd learned um, uh, and not let it just disappear and drift. Yeah, yeah. yeah? I think I think um, I, I've always been a big believer that you know leisure has to be earned to enjoy it. Now I'm not saying that you know you you and your, your friends hadn't hadn't earned your leisure. You, you clearly had, but I think I think there comes a point where you know if you're just going on another holiday for the sake of filling the time, it's kind of not as satisfying as if it's kind of like the main holiday of the year, that type of thing. You know, you know what I'm saying? Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely, I, w I, w I would agree mm, with that. Mm. I think one of the challenges, particularly of these people, were, were, were people who owned businesses, is that they'd made sacrifices, which meant they didn't really get much holiday at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they went from a scenario where they were like all in on their business. I certainly was. Yeah. They might get, they might squeeze a couple of weeks in somewhere, but carry on working whilst they were on holiday, and that was very much me. Um, so, so it was like the. Um, you know, the, the blocks were off, so to speak, and they could, yeah. they could really start, you know, enjoying themselves. So they definitely felt like they'd earned it, and it was kind of like yeah. their time, and, yeah. and they the, 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 the put off the family holidays to build a business and Correct. invest in the business, and that. a lot of sacrifices. And, and, and it was, uh, it was, it was now payback time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, they were well yeah. aware that they were fortunate to have, you know, achieved yeah. that. Yeah. A lot of yeah. them had, had seized opportunities, but 
a lot of sacrifices have been made and uh, a lot of risks taken mm -hmm. that could have that could have resulted in them losing everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, so now it was the time for them to maybe just you know enjoy themselves, but not work being the thing that yeah, you know, facilitated yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, that's been interesting. Just um, just kind of clarifying with Nick what his understanding of, of retirement is and uh, what needs to be in place before you do consider retirement. So thank you, Nick. That was that was really interesting. Thanks, John. Welcome. So I think what we've established so far, then Nick, is that um, it's a significant. If you, if you do choose to retire, it's going to be a significant life event that triggers that. I mm -hmm. think in your case, you were just burnt out from yep. owning a business. But I think in other cases, it can be um, the birth of a child, or the death of a relative, or um, the, the arrival of a grandchild. I think mm -hmm. um, if you choose to retire, uh, it's, it's definitely a, a significant life event that, that kind of triggers that. Yep, absolutely. I would agree with that. I think in my case, um, I got a few life events all kind of significantly <laughs> linking together which is that um, my father had died the mm -hmm. year before. Um, I was burnt out and uh, so my health was starting to suffer. And I was also conscious that um, I had a child who was only six at the time, mm -hmm. um, a child that had been you know, quite hard to get, to be honest. Mm -hmm. My wife and I had been married 13 years before we had him um, and we didn't think we were ever gonna have a kid and then suddenly we had one. So I, I had a few things coming together which were gave me the, the, I call it the kick up the arse moments to, to actually do something about it, to change my life and try and get on a different path. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. I mean, I've, I've had similar thoughts myself about, about retiring because I think, I, think I, need, I think I need a significant life event to happen before I just throw in the cards and say, right, I'm retired. And I think for me, um, that's going to be the arrival of a grandchild. I don't know. I've got, I've got two daughters in their early 20s. I'm, I'm assuming that... You know, hopefully one day I may be a granddad. Good luck. So, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming I'm, that will be my significant life event when I, when I can just say, right, I'm just going to give up, you know, my free time to, to my grandchild. Yeah. Uh, that hasn't happened yet, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of not really comfortable with the idea of retirement yep. just yet. It's, it doesn't kind of like feel ready for me. But um, if retirement is something that that, that you're considering uh, and is by choice, uh, yes. I think I think I would definitely agree that you do need to retire to something and it's it's very possibly you know a significant life event that, that will trigger that yeah than anything else no i would agree with that yeah. and i think i think you've got to have something to retire to i think mm. picking yeah. up on your point there i think that's mm. really important mm. um i didn't that i made a bit of a mistake in that sense in that i didn't really think what i was going to do after i retired but if I was going to give one piece of advice, it would be start planning for it, start preparing for it, start thinking about what you're going to do with your time uh, after you've retired. You might want to continue doing some kind of work, or you might not. But I think you've got to got to have things lined up that you're going to spend you know your time doing. And to my mind, holidays don't necessarily count. You know, I'm I'm on about things that bring you into contact, human interaction, bring you into contact with other people. Yeah, I think I think from from the conversation we've had previously, Nick, um, there, there were three significant life events that triggered your retirement. I yeah. think, I think you, were, you were burnt out from, from work. Yeah. Um, I think your father just died. Yes, that's it. And uh, I think your son was uh, just started primary school, so it was kind of yeah. like a, you know kind of like the, the fun age. Yes. And you probably wanted to just um, use the opportunity to, to spend some time with, with yeah, your son absolutely. when he was young. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I became uh, I became the uh, the stay-at-home dad, <laughs> in, in a way. Oh, well, yeah. I, and I, I, think, did, I think a lot I did, of dads would love to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. I, did, I, I took the burden of the school run off my wife. I, start, I did the mm. morning run. Mm. Uh, and um, we both tended to pick him up in the evening. Um, and the other thing I did a lot of is that I got to go to every sporting event. So... <laughs> And because of the school he was at, a lot of them were uh, were out and about in yeah. different parts of Yorkshire. Yeah. So I went to every cricket match, yeah. every rugby match, yeah. you know, and that was great. And I couldn't do that before, before. Too busy. And your son would have really appreciated that as well. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's, it's important for the kids to see to see the parents, you know, attending these events. So, yeah. yeah. So no, that's really interesting, Nick. So, so thank you. So I think I think the, t the takeaway from that then is that um, if, if, you, if you're fortunate to be in a position to choose to retire, you have to firstly retire to something yes. and more often than not 
it will be a significant life event yeah. that, that triggers that retirement. Yeah, I would, yeah. I would say that, definitely. Yeah. Cut. So are you, are you, are you from the York area then, Nick? Or are you, are yeah, you? my grandparents lived in York and my, my mum was brought up in York. Um, my dad was actually Irish. He came over from Ireland when he was 17. Came to live with his uncle Sam in York. Um, but I was actually born in um, Harrogate, which is nearby, and I'd, I'd always lived uh, in the area, Weatherby. So whenever people ask, I usually say I'm from Leeds. Right, got Because I went to, born in Weatherby, yeah, really. just easier, isn't it? Yeah, I went to Weatherby High School, all that kind of stuff, so I'd always considered myself a Leeds lad, but I've got a strong connection with York. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, you've, uh, you've found your feet now, it's lovely. Fantastic city, oh, York. Gorgeous. Beautiful. So uh, Nick's found us a perfect cafe right by the River Ouse, so uh, we're just enjoying a, a slice of Yorkshire cake and a cup of tea, so uh, before we continue. So just to recap Nick, I think uh, we've, we've covered your life up to retirement and the significant life events that led you to retire from your business and to a life of leisure and then something else. Yep. Just talk us through the actual reality of being retired because I think I think that comes with a bit of a caveat, a bit of a warning possibly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, retirement can definitely be a trap, <coughs> John, if you let it. Yeah, there is a trap in waiting, definitely. Um, what I mean by that is that there's a void to be filled. If you go from full on work and then suddenly you're full off work, there's a void and that's the trap. Okay. The trap is waiting for you and the, the way out of the trap or the way to avoid the trap if you like is to have something to retire to yeah. which I think we might have touched on in, yeah. in, in, you know, earlier uh, and, that, and that's the trap essentially. So I think planning for retirement uh, if you have a specific retirement date in mind and, and you have the ability to choose your retirement is all well and good but I think for many people Retirement is not always something they choose. They actually choose. They could fall into it. They could be maybe redundant. They could lose a job and, and then just never be able to get another job again. So, would, what would you say to someone who's, who's working now who doesn't necessarily have a retirement date in mind? Would, would you would you strongly advise someone to, to be to be planning their retirement just in case it, it comes it comes you know not yeah. by choice? Yeah, my advice to them would be start thinking about the things that you would do in retirement anyway even yeah. even if it's it's something that you haven't actually got in mind yet mm -hmm. you've got to start thinking about what you can do you've got to start building a, a foundation of things that you can do in retirement mm -hmm. um, and the sort of things that i find that successful retirees tend to do is that they tend to have a decent network um, of human connection already in place for when they retire so in other words when they do retire they have got people to play golf with, cycle with, I don't know, investment clubs to go to, maybe they're already volunteering or helping out somewhere, but they've, they've got things in place already that so, involve human connection. So it's, it's future proofing then, isn't it? It's kind of, Absolutely. So looking at where you are now, looking at 6, 12, 18 months down the line, retirement may become, I may have to face retiring, you know, not by choice. It's future-proofing now for that eventuality. Yeah, because okay. if you, if you yeah. don't future-proof, if you don't have anything in place, mm -hmm. you, don't, you haven't got any, um, you know, social connections at all, everything revolves around work. Because yeah. I see a lot of people that their social connections involve completely around work. Mm -hmm. Their mates, if you like, are, are their fellow work colleagues. Yeah. Well, suddenly they're not working anymore. Who are they, who are they gonna hang out with? during the day and, and you have to have people to hang out with throughout the week otherwise otherwise um, retirement can be very lonely and that's when you start feeling lost and you start feeling a, a, a lack of sense of purpose and those sort of things I think I think you know establishing a new network of friends particularly later in life isn't isn't always easy it's not something that you know comes naturally when, when we're younger and you know we're less attached we're less uh, rooted it's, and find it easy to make friends, but I think I think a lot of people, particularly you know, once they reach later life, they might find it difficult meet, yeah. meeting other people. How 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 would you recommend 
expanding your social life at this time of life? Well, sport is a good place to start, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be energetic sport. I mean, even something things like walking. Yeah. You could join a walking club, a ramblers club, or something like that. If you are a bit more energetic, then uh, you've got this river behind us. There's a rowing club just here. Um, the other day, I came walking down here, and I noticed that there were. Um, a, a, old, a lot of older people, and by older I say they must have been 70s mm -hmm. and above, yeah. um, and they were all together taking boats out on here rowing. Yeah. Yeah. So there must have been a rowing club for the over 70s or something, I don't know. So, so it's, sport's a good place to start. Yeah. So again, I think, I think it goes back to the, the repurposing your life, and the social connections can help give you purpose yep. later in life. Absolutely. Which, which, which material wealth wouldn't, won't necessarily give you. It's, no. It's the social connection. Social connection, yeah. human yeah. connection is yeah. the most important thing that you, that you have lined up yeah. for your retirement. Yeah. Thank you, Nick. I think uh, some good advice there to future proof for your future retirement, whether it's uh, a retirement that you're planning now or maybe it's a few years away, but it's something certain to consider and uh, to, you know, to, to get, those, uh, get that purpose uh, in life sorted before you retire. Yeah, thanks, John. <laughs> right, so here we have Constantine the Great, proclaimed emperor near this spot here in York in AD 306. Right, so uh, my day with uh, Nick in York is nearly over. So we've had a, had a good chat about the pitfalls of retirement, uh, what you need to do to prepare for retirement, and also finding purpose later in life. So Nick, just to summarise, what would your uh, key steps be for the, the ideal retirement? The ideal retirement, oh, I think there's one or two steps. Step number one, you must have something to retire to. Don't just go into it blind and hoping it'll work out. So you must have something to retire to. Secondly, uh, you need to make a plan even beyond that first year. Think about the things that you'd like to do over the next two, three, four years. The bucket list is always a great place to start, but um, there's more to retirement than, than just leisure. So for me, the other thing that I would link to that is finding a sense of purpose in retirement, whatever that is. Um, for me, I found a sense of purpose by sharing my knowledge. I had a lot of experience built up throughout a business career and I've ended up sharing that and that became my purpose. And then linking to that, um, on YouTube, I've actually started sharing my knowledge about retirement. So for me, it's about sharing that crystallized knowledge uh, to help people who are behind you on the path. Um, and always leave a lot of time for leisure. <laughs> Obviously, that's the whole idea behind retirement is, is leisure. Um, I don't tend to talk about the financial aspects much on my own channel, but I would say you've obviously got to put yourself in a position so that you can comfortably retire. You don't want to be retired and worried about money. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's all about, I think, um, future-proofing your, uh, your retirement, taking steps to what uh, you want to get from your retirement, and uh, as Nick says, having something to retire to. And, uh, going into it with, with open eyes so that, that's been fantastic Nick I've uh, really enjoyed our time yeah, in, in York thank you John it's been great so uh, we're checking out from York and uh, next time I see you I shall be back in sunny Manchester and uh, Nick will be uh, still here in York so uh, thanks for watching yeah. and, uh, so it's goodbye from him and goodbye from me goodbye <laughs>